Now, my job is now to preach to you. We are chosen to rise. That's what I want to say. To take the mission and the power forward. We are chosen to rise. And I'm sure after this weekend, we will feel energized. We will feel motivated. And we will feel that, that freedom to move forward and do this work and this mission. My I have a simple task this morning. I have to say a few words. I want to welcome you again and to give you a few ground rules. So before I begin, I must say how grateful we are to the Sikhan family. Who does this kind of thing in your life? This compound is so beautiful. If you have come here two weeks ago, you will not be here today. It, it is just that we have heard of what transpired over the last few months in this place. And you know what? Baba is called. He came here yesterday. No, the day before, and we were like, okay, are we going to have the conference? And it all came to pass because of the love that the Sikhsar family has for the organization and for all of us. So, this place, I just wanted to say two things about this space because Mr. Sikhsar gave me this. He said that this place called Dhamma Chitra is a learning center, a training center for practice. For practical spirituality. According to the founders, it provides excellent opportunities for the office bearers of the Thai organization at the national, regional, and international level to conduct programs free of charge. We are blessed to have a venue like this to conduct such programs. And you know that you are in a place that has a stupor that is nowhere in this part of the world. And Swami actually gave permission to build us to work. He gave the dimensions, he set the engineers, because everything they do here, it is with Swami's brain and everything. So we are very privileged. And if you can spend some time around the stupa, it's going to be very beautiful. So just a basic housekeeping announcements. Your safety and security is of paramount importance to us. However, we have no public liability insurance here, so you have to take care of you. All the hundreds when you're going up and down the step. Neither the secret that family nor the FIOT team can take responsibility if something happens, so don't swap. COVID 19 is still in the air. I mean, you wear your mask if you are not comfortable, and if you see anyone who appears to be, you know, having any symptoms of anything. Just say the word, we have a few doctors on the spot, you know, we have antigen tests around, we want you to be safe, we want you to go back to your home safely. We had security guards around the clock, do not leave the compound unless you get permission from us to do so. Not that anything will happen to you if you do, but we don't want you to do unless we know you are out there. It's not that bad as you say. Each floor has more rooms. Now, I need to say to you, there is no drill this weekend. From a safety perspective, if you hear a bell, if you hear someone say, get out of the floor, move, you move. We have workers on each level who will take you safely through the exits. Should anything happen, no power is not going to allow them. But we have to be prepared. From a health and safety perspective, you are in a building. There are safe exits. Now, when you come to the exits at the back, there, there's an exit at the back there, and of course there and on the side. I must point if we are having any emergency. One is out by the number three when we get protection, and one is out in the courtyard in. It's clearly labeled. Please follow the instructions of the wardens. Brother Clifton, I'm in the back there, he's in charge of all the wardens. Good, raise your hands. And any problem you have with the most of this guy, he solves problems. In fact, he has been camping here for the last three weeks. Every day, he has to care. They need to They get their family. Your washrooms are on the left side. Women, they have to know entry doors there. Don't go in there. No one is going to come out at you. So the washrooms are on the left here for women. And further down, past the two, no entry doors for men. 
case of any medical emergencies, we have two of doctors on the spot. Males of his serve are there, back of the hall. Now, we are trying very much to be green. So we have given you a lovely cup. Everybody, please bring your cup down, drink your coffee, drink your tea, drink your drinks. Plastic, if you have a reusable plastic bottle drinking, we are saying you don't want any of those um, Right, and we will not have Love all silver, right? So drink in that cup. Now, if you are here, then you have to register during the break, please do so. If you are sitting in and you require, you can you ask us for accommodation and you didn't get your accommodation yet, please do so during the break. Do not miss any part of this conference. Question. We have a box at the back of the question box. If you have any questions, please put your questions on a paper. They are the papers or dialogue. You can just write your question, put it in the box. There is a transport on the hospitality desk, just at the back of your room. If you want to do a tour, you want to transfer back to the airport. Right. <laughs> Finally, practice speaking softly and lovingly. Maintain the sanctity of this place and do participate and fully enjoy these programs. Thanks, everyone. the brothers and sisters, very different We proceed to the program and I would like to introduce you an important person again. He is a doctor, and before I want to welcome him, I want to let you know a little bit of his introduced I have known him for a long time. He has been four years in the public service, 40 years medical doctor, and still continues to help. As a great lecturer, UB School of Medicine for 15 years. He has been in the research site international organization since 1986. Served in many positions, like SSE teacher for 10 years, regional spiritual coordinator, national young adult coordinator. So the young adults here, please take a fight. Center chair, NCT of TV, now central coordinator and chairman of the Secretary Science Institute, Brazil. Brothers and sisters, for instance, maybe you don't know, there are five schools here for free in the science Asia, done by TV. Please welcome no one else and Dr. Dr. Tiwan. Language. Let us share a few things. In Trinidad, we will say good morning. 
open up to the messages morning or evening because we know all mornings are good and all evenings are good. So morning. Also, uh, if you are asked, how are you going? How are you going? It doesn't mean uh, what sort of transport you take. It simply means how are you? So when someone asks you, how are you going? You'll say, I'm going well. You know, I'm okay, I, I'm well. And finally, nine, I like any. Lion is not a citrus fruit. Lion is a party, you know, a time to, to, to go out and enjoy yourself. So yesterday, uh, I took a film and Brother Harry and uh, Dr. Milano to a beach line in Morocco. And uh, if you were here long enough, you'll take you to the river line. In a river line, they take you to the river and they cook uh, veggie duck. Veggie curry duck, and they have non alcoholic beer, and they, they dance. And uh, the next few days, we would have a silent right here in the city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so our first service of today is not my journey, and my message is really about my journey. With Swami over the last three years, showing him how I, I learned to love his uncertainty and how I learned to understand that he showers in me with the love of a thousand mothers. Before I go into that uh, story, I want to put it in the context. Many years ago, uh, Dr. Shamra, right? he was the NCP, many of you know him, he passed away a few years ago. We used to have some spiritual discussions. And he said to me, I asked him one day, I said, Sean, do we ask Swami for anything? Do we, do we need to pray to Swami? But he knows everything. But do we just go and pray to him? And Sean said, he said, Doctor, in, a, in any day, you, in any 24 period, he had times when you were in duality. That means when you, Swami and you will not be will be apart. And there will be times that you'll be not duality for advice. Where for instance in meditation, where you and Swami are one. He said, when you're in the state of advice, non-duality, there is no need to ask Swami, because Swami knows everything. When you're in the state of duality, it's okay to pray. You don't need the mother, you need the father. So I want you to remember that. And I'll tell you why I remember that. The second thing is, you all know Satyajit Saira. Satyajit was the caretaker of Swami. He was the caretaker of Swami for almost uh, 50, I think from 1998 to 2011. Many years. He said, he shared a story one day. He said, uh, he said, Swami was going to give a discourse, and a professor came to him with a walkman. He goes to his dad with a walkman, and uh, he gave it to Satish and he said, uh, Please record Swami's speech, and I'll, I'll, I'll collect the walkman afterwards. So he did that, but he couldn't find the professor afterwards. So he decided to put it in his pocket, and he went into Swami's room. And when Swami saw him, Swami said, What's that? And Swami, he said, Swami, uh, Walkman. Swami said, Walkman, what is, what is Walkman? And then he said, I described what Walkman was. And then Swami said to him, he said, he shouted at him, he scolded him. He said, why do you go on begging to these things? Why do you ask me for anything after all these years with me? Do you want Walkman? And he said, no, no, Swami, no, Swami, I don't want anything. He said, what do you want? Swami, I want you. I only want you. He said, good boy, good boy, good boy. So, I will share that, put that in the context. I want to share my short story about my uncertainty with Swami. In 2018, uh, September, I had an MRI, a 
and I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. And uh, at that time, I spoke to my doctor. I was going to Pushanti to attend the father's birthday. And I said to him, he said, I need to have a prostate biopsy. So I said to him, can I do it after I come back from Swami? So he said, okay. So I went to Swami in November 2018. When I reached there, I remember what Swami said to me, don't ask for any anything. So every day I used to go to the uh, Samadhi, put my head in the Samadhi, and just say, Swami, I love you. I never asked. For the day I was diagnosed, I never asked Swami once. Please cure me of prostate cancer. I never, I never did that. So when I came home, I, my doctor did the prostate biopsy and it showed that cancer spread short prostate. And he said it had to be removed. So I called Brother Harry and asked him if uh, they were doing prostate uh, surgery, uh, robotic, robotic surgery in uh, Prashanti. And he said no. So I had to make other arrangements. I inquired in the States, the US state was extremely expensive, and my insurance was going to cover it. So I had to do it somewhere else. And one day I just woke up, and I remember an old friend of mine from medical school living in Delhi. And I called him. I said, I explained to him. He said, sure. He said, doctor, just come. Um, I'll get a private hospital where you can do it. Robotic surgery for prostate cancer. And you, everything will be fine. You stay with me. And uh, I'll arrange everything. And he did. Unfortunately, he passed away from COVID uh, a year ago. You know, he's a, a medical doctor also. So I went to Prashanti. I went to, to um, Delhi. The, the, the hospital was the Cancer Institute, Rajiv Gandhi, Gandhi Cancer Institute, the Surgeon Institute. So um, the first day I went there, my time limit was very small for just 14 days. So I had to come back home. We couldn't go to Prashanti, unfortunately. Uh, we missed going to Prashanti the first time. So the first day I went, uh, they took me to the hospital, the driver, the shopper, and uh, we went. And I, when I reached there, I, I realized that uh, it was like Christmas Eve or Christmas Eve in a, in a mall. And it was so crowded. People were all over the place. You know? uh, it was a, a, a cancer center for all sorts of cancers, and children, adults. I felt a bit scared because all these people were moving around, speaking different languages, you know, and uh, I started to get a little fear in me. And um, they got a translator. How it worked was, throughout the entire day, I had to go up and down to get tested. So you have to, you have to go to the department if you want an x-ray. You go to the department, you get a, 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 a slip. You come down, you go to the cash and you strike your car. You take that walk, go back to the x-ray. And so we went the entire day, but there's actually this ECG coming in. So finally, uh, in the evening or four, I had to see the, the doctor, find the doctor, who look over my, my notes to uh, the first surgery, which is in the following day, the next day. And uh, so when he's looking through my notes, he's sitting there. You know, I was. I was I was a bit frustrated, you know, when I saw the crowd. I was a bit, you know, uh, you know, fearful what's gonna happen. Being so far away from home, my wife was with me. And um, suddenly my phone ran. And it was a side emoji from Trinidad, Tano Street, living and working in uh, in Delhi. And she said to me, uh, Sarah, I want to go Sarah. She wanted to come and visit me. And I said to her, Hello, uh, please come out there and have a doctor. So I put the phone back and suddenly he raised his head. He said, Sarah? Did you say Sarah? I said, yes. He said, do you know I'm a side emoji? I said, no. He said, do you know my parents are side emoji? I said, no. He said, Dr. Tiwari, the surgeon who is going to operate on you on your robotic surgery is the best surgeon in Southeast Asia. He said, ministers and, and chiefs from the gulf, they all come to him. So don't worry, Dr. Tiwari, you're in good hands. And once I heard that, 
You know, I realized all my fear is just disappear. So I mean, was looking at me. I knew that. Of course, the people still think he ain't like the real me and the other. And all I remember was Bajans. Bajans were playing in the operating theater. Uh, I didn't see anybody because it was robotic surgery. The only person sitting there with me would, would be the uh, anesthetist. Uh, the other doctor, I didn't see them. I got up, I, I got up, I, I got up, um, I recovered and it went. I spent three days in the hospital. I came out. And then a funny thing happened. We, we were upset, my wife and I, we weren't getting a chance to go to the party. Back in childhood, I was I was put in, in adult hampers, adult hampers, which had an adult diet, which had to wear for three months. So it was a developed child with a party. So Tanu called me and she said, I'll go out and uh, run the car. Run the car in November 2019. Run the car, we uh, arrive at the Bajan Boys. They're coming to, to Delhi to do a satsang at the uh, head center in Delhi. And uh, they will they will inaugurate a panel of uh, uh, you want to come? Can you come? So I said yes, I'll okay. come. And then we went to the beautiful satsang. We got to do Panda Mascara from Panda. And she said, she said to me, she said, uh, uh, Uncle, you didn't get a chance to go to Prashanti. Prashanti came to you. And that was how Swami was looking after me. And then um, the final part of that chapter was my trip back home. And as I told you, I had to wear adult diapers for three months. So I was very uh, worried about going to the bathroom and having to change that sort of thing. So we booked in the uh, British Airways. We, we, we were booked pretty funny. So we, we went to the plane. And uh, as we got to the plane, I went down to the plane looking for my seat. I couldn't find it. So I asked the hostess, Where's my seat? She said, You know, you know the economy class, you're in business class. So apparently, uh, we had some points from flying, and so I upgraded us. The business class. So I had no problems, you know, it was very, very comfortable, otherwise, really back home. So, Swami says, Love, I am still with you. And he also says, I will shower in you the love of a thousand mothers. So, as I end, I want to share something with you. Swami has sacrificed so much for us. Every single minute of Swami's life, he sacrificed for his devotees. He said that those who work for me, I will take away the cycle of birth and death. That will be of them in this lifetime, but of their children, their grandchildren, and their great grandchildren. What else can you get from the loving Lord? Even Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos, they don't have those books that we have, the Swami has given us. You know, we don't get paid, you know, in dollars, but he pays us with grace. How about more do we want in this lifetime? The world is in a crisis, and Swami's mission is to establish the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man. If we say, and Swami always said, let the Atman Sarup love, embodiment the divine art. If Swami says, you and I are one, then Swami's mission becomes our mission. And our mission is to establish the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man. If we fail to do that, then we will be showing ingratitude to Swami. Once he told Sundaraya, Swami told Sundaraya, once uh, Swami was in his room with Sundaraya, and he was reading letters, but he was, didn't speak very much that day. He was walking up and down, up and down, uh, you know, and he was looking through his letters. And Sundaraya said, Swami was muttering himself. Everyone is asking, good boy for their daughter, good job, you know, promotion, more money, but no one is saying thank you, you know. And 
Swami said to him, that Swami is plain, is on the camera, we can do before. How many of you are going to come and I think? And he said also, I did not come to make, for you to make me another Murti in your prayer room. I came for much more than that. I came to remind you that you are Atma and that you are powerful and that you can change this entire world. And it's only Swami's teachings, it's only Swami's devotees by putting into practice this method of his, his, his issue, a method of issue with love, right action, and good non violence, and we change this world. So, the good thing I want to remind you that we are all soldiers inside the army. And our weapon is love. Every day, as a set aside officer, when you get up in the morning, the first question you should ask, Swami, what can I do with you today? Swami, how can I make this as a dialogue a better organization? And then you, you say to Swami, Swami, I'm your beacon of love and light. Give me the chance and opportunity to go out there in societies and shed that light on everyone and change this world. Swami is not no longer here to give darshan. Each one of you has to give darshan. Each one of you, by living the message of love, by living the message of peace, truth, non violence, each one of you is now Swami. Each one of you has to go out there and give darshan and become this beacon of love and light. May you all continue to be this loving instrument and this family shower in love and grace of all of you. Sarah. Hi, um, thank you so much, Dr. Gautam Kimani. I can only say that whenever he calls me, it is only about silence. It's not about anything else. And I know as for his message and as his teaching, you learn the best of best he wants from that day. And known him for years. Baba bless him. It's a very good example to us amidst us. How we should be surrendered all the time to Bhagavan Baba. It's a great opportunity to learn from our technical leader. To don't ask him or do for him. What can we do? Prashanti, you don't have to go to Prashanti. Prashanti comes to you. And not only that, not only that, all the people, all the senior officers, whoever you want to see, whoever you want to meet, arrange right, arrange and right, they will come to you. Today is a special day because such happens again. Prashanti Council members, Prashanti Council, in such a style, World Foundation Director is here. You don't have to speak for them, they will come to you. Who's going to go? Brothers and sisters, I would like to introduce you someone who has been very long in the cycles. From the beginning, he is currently a member of the Prashant Council and a director of the Sanjay Pai World Foundation. If you don't know, don't worry, he will tell you what Sanjay Pai World Foundation is. 
He serves practically as chairman of the one Latin America, a psychologist by profession, only doctors we are here, with past experience in this field since 40 years. No one else can Dr. Leonardo Luther represents some of the largest American, European, and Japanese EPSC institutes in Latin America. Dr. Luther has worked in the science organization for more than 40 years till now. He is one of the founding and first coordinating committee member of the Citizen Society of the Citizen and Argentina. And we talk about Argentina, when we talk about Argentina, there is only one. If when he introduces himself, he says, when he says, it's the land of men. <laughs> He has held numerous posts within the science organization, among which are founding member of the CSEC Society Trust of Argentina and president of the Center for Council of Latin America. Please put your hands together to welcome no one else and no one else. Hmm. I am yes, I open my hand to announce the divine lot to speak for the final master and all our sisters the divine. Is here now, it's now Christ. It's been always there, it will always be there. I am very, very grateful for the opportunity to be with you for the presentation to be here. I'm grateful to Swami for giving me the opportunity. I pray to him that you will open not only your hearts but your ears to understand my Spanish, English. And I would like to share with you several things. I brought these four folders. It will take me only six hours to share them with you when I go to my computer. I want to share with you the teachings of Swami. I want to share with you some practical experiences, practical spiritual practices that he has shared with us that are very important. Also, I want to share with you 45 divine experiences we have with me. I want to talk with you about the present situation of the Citizen Design International Organization and what is happening in the Dual Council. So I hope that we have enough time to do all that for that. Why are we here today? Of course, we are here because Swami has invited each one of us. We are here today because we have received the divine touch. We are here today because we have traveled for many, many lives to be here today. We have started long ago when we were mineral. Then we made a leap, quantum leap, and we became a vegetable. And after a few years of time, we became an animal. And in my life, we came to the dog, the cat, an elephant. Now, there are five different forms of animals before we become a human being. Monkey. And in one of those lives, we became a human being. At the beginning, we had a human form, but an animal became because we were animals in our previous lives. Then we developed without these human forms, but very demonic behavior. After many, many lives, we started to have a more human behavior, not the human, only human form. And we are now in this stage where we try not only to have this human form and human behavior, but we want to have a divine behavior. This is where we are. That's why we are here. 
by trying to make it one good deed and become one day what we really are. We are God. We are God. We are God and we have to awaken. That's why Swami invited here to give us an opportunity to develop more intense yearning to awaken. Give us more inspiration to intensify our yearning, our sadhana, to wake up. Perhaps you are part of this divine organization because you feel that this is your new temple. Now you have, perhaps before this life, in your previous life, in India, you went to the temple and you do your rituals and your practices. Now you are here in the West Indies, in Chimidala, and besides that, there's another opportunity to do that. But the Saifa is not a religion in that sense. It's a religion with capital letters to radicate, to reunion with our real self. That is the real purpose. We have two legs, right? These two legs help us to walk. We cannot walk easily with one leg when we do it like that. Why do we have two legs? According to God. But what are the two legs in the spiritual path? And this is very, very important. Because the spiritual path is not the sum of rituals and dogmas. It's a way of being, it's an attitude of behavior. These two legs are one is that each day we must work more intensely to advance in our own way to be. Put into practice the divine teachings and be a little more aware each day, more close to our way to be. It's clear in my Spanish English. Right? Okay. Each day we must do more. We go to the gym, we want to come by the physical of Silver Stallone. We must add a little every day. When you start today, you have one pound, the next day two pounds, the next day ten pounds. So that's the only way the muscle will grow. If you remain always with one pound, the muscle will never grow. The spiritual path is the same. Each day you have to have, add more and more and more intensity to your spiritual practice. If not, you will be here in ten more lives in a meeting like this, listening to someone like me, trying to understand his English as I try to understand your English. <laughs> so we have to add more weight for our spiritual practice. This is not the ritual. This is an opportunity to awaken. But what is the purpose of the second leg that will lead us to our destiny? So I said that the second leg is to help other people to advance. And you must remember that. If you don't help other people to advance, you will never reach the goal. You may have practiced sadhana 23 hours or 24 hours a day, meditation, pranayama, asanas, service. You can sing bhajans all day long. You can do whatever you like. With one leg, you will never reach the, the goal. We need to add the help of other people to spread the peace, to spread the divine message. When Swami created the Rajasthan Council, he invited us to his house, he took with us with so much love, he gave us his wisdom, more his wisdom, you know, the way to express his love. And he spoke to us about the purpose of something else. And suddenly he said, You have to bring my message to every corner of the world. And this was not a divine command for just the members of the family council, it is a command for all of you, for everybody. We have to spread his message. And that is the second thing we have. That is why you can't think that just going to a science center once a week will go somewhere. This will purify it in your mind and your heart, but you will not reach the goal. You will not awaken. Now, so I said that liberation is just a frame of mind away. It's very close, but you need to have that here and if you want to do some practical exercise that will ask you to close your mouth 
go to your nose and don't breathe. Okay, don't breathe. Till you die. Okay? But before you die, if I ask you, do you want ten million dollars or do you want to breathe? You say breathe. No, we would want ten million dollars, right? And that's your crazy. The yearning to this air before dying because you are suffocating. This is the desire we have to have to wake up. But to have this desire do not come from the air, do not come by itself. You know, when Castrilli was dying in the last moment, Swami went to this room. Castrilli was very close to Swami. He, I don't know, any other human being was being so close. Perhaps the caretakers of Swami, Raja Reddy, Baradishna, Satyajit, but I did not even them. Swami went to this room, he was dying, and you think, well, Swami can grant him anything, of course, he can grant him everything. But you know what Swami said in the room? He told his family, close this tap. The tap was uh, not very well close and close to the He said, close the tap. Yes, you have to be distracted, not even by those drugs. You wanted him to be completely focused. And to get him to be completely focused, you have to be focused all the time. Kind of which that moment, and at that moment, you think about the moment. Just the result of how we live every moment of our life, we will be able at that last moment to be aware of God. Because I'm sorry to tell you a very bad news. I hope you will forgive me. Please say yes. Okay, you are going to lie. I can tell you where, but I will not pass. But anyway, I am also going to lie. So if you are going to die, you have to take advantage of every moment. Because the purpose of this life is not to accumulate wealth or fame. You know, if I ask you, perhaps some of you are very rich in your past lives, and go and ask you, please give me some money for the guy in your past life. You can, I cannot give you and I cannot get it myself. Right? So what did you do with that money? Did you carry with you? What did you do with the fame you got? The houses you have. Now, if they didn't go with you, and they will not go with you, you have to be careful. What will go with you will be the, your mind. The purity of your mind or the dirt of your mind. So we have to do a very important spiritual practice. I'm going to share it with you the first. One of these folders are about spiritual practices that I want to share with you. There are many. And I'm sorry to tell you that once I tell you about the spiritual practices, you have two options. So put them into practice or not to. If you don't do that, you're going to create a very bad karma. Because when you don't know something and you do a bad action, you have some bad karma. But if you know something and you don't do it, the karma, the bad karma is much more intense. I'm sorry to tell you, but I'm going to burden you with a very big risk. The very, the very first practice of Swami teaches. What does he say? What is all the spiritual activities that we do? It's a purification, purificatory action. This is English. It's like cleaning a window. I tell you that window. You clean the window, and the other side is water. If you see him, you are aware. That's it. No more, no more birth, no more death, you are God again. Just look at him. The problem is that that window is dirty, you can't see it through it. So somebody comes and tells you, it's very simple, clean the window. But again, the two, the two legs tells you, listen, the purpose of your life, the only purpose of your life, I will repeat it in Chimilan, in that English. The only purpose of your life is to clean the window. The second day, clean the window and don't add dirt. Because you must go one step forward and two steps backwards. So the whole spiritual practice is to clean the window and not add dirt. For example, you do some service activity. You are cleaning the window. 
Then you go back to your house, you speak to your wife of your husband. You are there to the reward. Whenever you do a bad action, there. Whenever you have a bad thought, there. Whenever you have a bad feeling, there. So the art of the spiritual life is only here, never out there. That is the secret of the spiritual life. So how can we achieve this expertise of not adding that? These are the spiritual practices that I want to share with you today. I hope that I will be able to share all of them today, not tomorrow, and then not in my next slide. <laughs> I hope this will not happen. Or at least, if I have to do it, when I hope you will not do it more. So listen to me, because we have applied these practices. The first spiritual practice, and this is very simple, but it's very difficult. So please remember, if you don't apply what I'm going to tell you now, it's going to be a very bad karma to you. Okay? So you have two options now. Listen carefully or close your ears. Right? The first one, from this moment onwards, now, 10, 14, don't ever criticize another human being again. Okay? No more criticism. No more gossiping. Don't worry about the other person. You don't know them. You don't know their past. You don't know their, you don't know their present. You have only to worry about yourself. Some say, seek your own goals. They can as very big, even if they are small. Consider that the faults of the other is very small, even if they are very big, and you never always fall. You never always fall. So, we stop criticizing, we will do a very important cleaning of the video. So, he says, another important spiritual practice don't ever forget God. That means, what was the sacred Mahamantra Sri Sai Baba? You know, what was Swami's Mahamantra is why fear when I hear. This is it's not the mantra like Om Taksa, Om Namonarayanayan. It's a purificatory, but the secret that he gives us, don't be afraid. Why fear when I hear? She decides that something very similar with different words. You know, you remember that I might have said that in 2014. Yeah. Anyone knows? Anyone remembers? Okay, he said, if you look to me, I look to you. That is the most important secret to not feel the world again. What is the meaning of if you look to me, I look to you? Very simple. If you look to him, means you are thinking about him. You cannot look at him without thinking of him, right? You are aware of his presence. And he promised, whenever you think of me, I promise I will be there for you. So, if you want to have Swami with you, you don't need to go to Prasanthi in a physical place. You need to think of him. He promised. I will be there for you. I will be in front of you, looking for you, but you, I don't know which is the perfect expression. But he said, it's so simple. Just think about me. Think that I'm there. I promise I will be there. So this is the key of our spiritual life. Think all the time about the divine person. When somebody left his physical body, I will mix some experiences not to bore you too much. When somebody left his physical body, I was in a, in a conference, a young adults conference, but by the way, I'm very, I'm very grateful to the family to bring this, because uh, these feelings are going to play an important role in the life mission. Now, we bring aside, let me have to write that. And I am. I'm going to invite the International Young Adults 
So I was in the Young Adults Conference in Mexico, and uh, one day suddenly I had, a, I had a, a urge, I don't know why, to call to Ilya to find out about Swami. And when I called, I called to one person who had an immediate a connection with Swami's family and knew everything just 10 seconds after it happened. And that person told me Swami had just gone. In touch me because I no one knew that Swami was going to die. Well, some people knew because Swami three years before had told some people that he was going to leave this schedule. He also told that to Satyaji. Um, he told that to Satyaji that he said, but he please don't say that to me, don't tell me that. And he warned me that he was going to leave this schedule. He also told a very close person to him, as I said before, three years in advance. Not something that happened. A chance we are planning it. So I didn't go to India. I was in the conference and, and uh, I planned to go to India for next to Lukuluna where the Maha Samadhi was going to be inaugurated. No one knew how it was going to be because they put a wall in front of me. Personally, I thought that it was going to be a statue that should be signed and surely that it was seated. You know the statue of Shiri. Yeah. I thought it was going to be like that. Before leaving from Argentina to India, I had a very special dream. And then it reminded me to tell about my first in Okay? Okay, you told me for a while. So in that dream, I was in the Ashram and I was in the Makasamari, you know, uh, where we usually go to the place of our head, but on top. Near the top. And I was feeling such pain, I was crying, I was really having pain in my heart and contrary. And I was touching the Maxamari, but on top of the Maxamari was Swami's body. But Swami's body was covered with cement. Actually, the Maxamari didn't have the marble yet, it was all cement. And Swami's so body was lying and not all it was also covered with cement. So I touched his body, when I touched his body, his body erased. Uh, and one in one arm, his body went around my head and brought me to him. And I felt the heavy body, you know, I felt this cement body very heavy of my head, bringing me to him. He, he raised and he brought me to him, so my head was only touching his. And he slipped his phone to my ear. And I felt the warm leg of his spread warm in my ear. And he spoke to me. And then I, I woke up. A couple of days later, I went to India. And two days before uh, the opening of Samadhi of the Lord's to get to me, he said, There are going to be two speakers. One will be from India, or from the different international organization, I want, I want you to be the speaker of the international organization. So I got to give a speech on the opening of the Mahasamadhi in the international organization. And when I started to speak, then I remember what Swami told me in my ear. He told me, I haven't gone anywhere, I am everywhere already. And this is the reality. We try to present to me there because we feel that this God is there, but we don't understand the swadhis. We don't understand who God is. God, God wears a human body when he becomes an avatar for a period of time. But God at the same time is everywhere all the time. What's in our hearts? If you learn not in our hearts, we will exist, not only be alive. This is there, this is mine. Everything is wrong all the time. There is nothing. What is the secret that this guy will be that Swami can be? What is the, the real truth? What is the truth? There is only God. There is nothing exactly. There is nothing in this universe that God. 
nothing, all is God, all the time. So, where is God? Everywhere. Now, for example, if you don't have the right attitude, it works as to go there. In any instant, it's a big geographical place. Wherever you are, you have to tune in to remember God. Rashan is with you at that moment. That is why don't think that God is in one place. God is everywhere all the time. You have to just remember that. If you remember that, we will live inside. Inside of the deep in us. In us. We will live in the constant presence of sight. And one day we will reach the constant integrated awareness. That is the spiritual path. The spiritual path is not meditation, it's not service, it's not budget, it's not SAT classes. These are just purificatory acts. The exactly way of spending our time. The real spirituality is a way of being, how we react, how we are, how we smile, how we laugh. My first day of Sunday before I got it. I was in another spiritual organization and I heard about Swami and he touched me. I don't know why, but I heard that he said, Oh, yes. But in that organization, we believe in another avatar. It was sometimes a physical form and sometimes not, but we believe in that avatar. When I heard about my avances of the Baba, I said, who is the Avatar? So one day I had a dream. And that dream I was in a room in Kasanti with seven other people. And then Swami came. And I did like that. And I was surprised. I was not yet assigned a thing. When I did that, I thought, what am I doing? And then I thought, he started to walk in the room uh, alone. English now is going away. I will continue in Spanish if you want to. <laughs> so he came by each one of us and I thought, I will know if you are God. Because if you are God, I have to be something special. This is what I thought. And when Swami approached me, had the most incredible experience, it's very difficult to put into words. I'll get to start. Waves of energy starting to to go from the top of my body to my head. But as the wave of energy was going up, in each, in each cell of my body, I felt a divine peace. You know when you put water to boil, and the water boils and the power gets closed? It's okay, you understand? Each cell of my body felt that peace and it's broken. And when it's broken, I felt peace there. I felt peace. Here, 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 because I felt, I felt fully conscious in the heart of the world. But when the third wave came, it hit my knee and I fell to the floor. And I felt, when I fell to the floor, I was completely dead. My body was dead. And I was fully conscious. But I was fully conscious within a dead body. No, if an actor sometimes your heart is numb and you have a movie to feel like a dead flesh. Yeah. When my whole body was done, that time spot. Completely dead. I cannot do anything. I, I was aware that was caught inside the dead body. No, inside the corpse. And I was lying on the floor, and something at that time was finishing his round, was on the door ready to leave. And I look at him and I said, not in words, because the guy was dead. But with my whole being, I said, you are God, you are God, you are God. I, I screamed that. And he looked at me 
and instead of living in came to me and he uh, went down and raised my dead body. And when he raised my dead body, he says, he's three times my heart. And I felt his mouth is in my heart. And actually, it was incredible because the heart chakra is on the back. And I felt it there. And I felt his lip kissing my heart and I woke up. And here I am. So let me, I don't know, I have to ask Swami for a miracle because I have only 32 minutes to share all problems with you. But let me tell you something. I want to urge everyone, each one of you, to take full advantage of this opportunity. You know, when I went to India the first time, I waited two hours to be at least. When I went there for the first time, I was yet on the side of the I had that deal in Argentina. I went to see the spiritual master of the other spiritual organization, Sudalarma Mandala, the Bachelor Organization. And I was supposed to go to stay with him for one month to receive all the lessons that would take me years to get in Argentina. Because at that time, they gave you a nine years. The practice of meditation that you have to practice for 90 days without interruption. If one day you didn't do it, you have to do it all over again. It took me two years to finish 90 days. And then they say, imagine the amount of years that would still be there trying to get the third lesson. But that, that spiritual master gave Josephina and was his translator, and we got the very good report and joined this. We come to India. We will stay in my house and we will uh, give you all the lessons together. So in one month, you will receive the lessons that will take you 20 years to receive. I said, great. So one year, I said, you will take you to this house. But three days after being in this house, I felt I couldn't wait for the second morning. You need to see Saiba. I told him, sorry, sorry. I, I felt I need to see Saiba. I said, I understood. Go. From that second, as I said yes to Swami, miracles started to happen to me. If I just think the miracles that happened to me from the moment I left this house, did I reach the place where Swami was? I would be here two days. And I only have 21 minutes. But one miracle after the other. Finally, Swami, I found out that Swami was in the tour in the south of India, going to Madras. So I went to Madras in the Chennai. And no one knew where Swami was coming, but then they said, in my life today, I went there. And I was there with 50,000 people, more or less, and there were very few Westerners who were sitting on the front line. And suddenly my heart started to be, I don't know what is happening, I have some kind of arrhythmia. And then Swami's car came. And I always say, what are your heart? I heart knew before my mind. And from that day onwards, Every day I knew when someone was going to come for lunch before, because a couple of days before my heart started to be for lunch. When Sonny came and came to be lunch, he stood in front of me. And the first thing I wanted to I told him, my first word was Sonny was Sonny, I want to see you. What I wanted, what, what was the I wanted to collect with you? I wanted to have an interview. But he said, instead of an interview, Sonny, I want to see you. And he gave me an incredible experience of telepathy. I have to this one. I heard his voice over my head. He didn't open his mouth, but I heard very clear his voice need to say, But you are seeing me now. And I replied, No, no one in the view is my direct. It was my first interaction with Swami. I was very nice because in front of me, Swami raised a flag and a lot of petals fell on me and all around was very divine. A couple of days later, he went to give a public meeting in, in Abbotsbury. And also he gave a talk and then he was seated to see the cultural problem. I was not far away. I was in cheese, you know, I was not in white, so I was just coming to see what is all this. So I said, I have my business card. Of my visiting card, I want to introduce myself to somebody else knows who I am. So I stood up and I went to Swami. Swami was sitting on a chair, like let's say, where 
dei giochi di stile della gente. Ma tengo l'idea che non ascolti, ma vuoi essere sicuramente a invece di mai fare. Sicuramente tu che giochi a vita, che giochi a vita, che se guarda bene da qui. Now I understand that very lucky. Ask me all that. We are so lucky because I say it's here at the beginning. Out of the eight or twenty million forms of life, we are born as human beings. It's so significant. But imagine every second the person dies, the person is born. Now we say that there are eight million people on earth, right? But how many human souls live within ten years? Trillions. Imagine in the last 5,000 years, there is no number to count them. Out of all of them, we are born as human beings with an avatar is born. Just count the amount of human beings of souls that incarnate since Krishna today. Trillions and trillions and trillions. And now we are incarnated in human form with an avatar here. Not only that, something even more difficult. Out of those trillions, how many know about Swami? A hundred, twenty million, thirty million. Not only that, how many have been called by him to be his disciples? Because we can never this. Forget the word devotee. We don't know if we are devotees. Devotees is one who is accepted and recognized as Swami as devotee. But let me assure you. All of us, all of us are his disciples. What does it mean? It means that he, as a full Navatar, has agreed to become our master. He said, many, many lives ago, I will guide you, I will protect you, I will love you, I will teach you, you, you wake up. That promise will last he will wake up, I don't know if in this life or how many lives, up to, up to each of us. But he is our spiritual master, and we are his decisions. And this is a bond, and a very open bond. He will remember that you will never have a sour face. You will smile all the time. Because can, how can not be, will be happy? To remember that he promised that he will be our master, that he's our master, protecting, guiding, teaching, loving us all the time. How can we not be happy? If we are not happy, if we don't smile, we will be able to Or we have constipation. <laughs> Understand this? We need to be happy all the time. We need to smile. This is another spiritual exercise. To smile because when we smile, when we are happy, we spread joy. And in this world, we have to spread joy. This is a little bit of energy that we have the other people to awaken. Joy is another form of love. Love is the real power. We have to be loving. So, another way of being loving, another spiritual exercise. From that moment onwards, we will never again be decisive. Why? Hey. Yes. Say yes. 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 Not to me. Yes. Okay? Again. Will you ever criticize again? Oh, no. no. Swami so, mean, will never criticize another human being. Yes. And from this moment onwards, more difficult one, going from life to failure. From this moment onwards, you will never again. Okay? Never again. It doesn't matter what happens. Swami said that the devotee is a quality, the equal mindedness, mindedness. Joy, sorrow, it doesn't mind. All the time, whatever you say to me, Swami, what I have to go to. So, why am I going to get angry? If I get angry, I disapprove what Swami says to me. So he said, this is the best for you. I said, no, so I don't want it. What are you doing? You're getting angry with Swami. You're getting angry with the king. He would not be happy with you. You said, Swami, I want to love you. One day, I gave a conference. I spoke in front of Swami. Swami was very happy with my 
talk, when I get to get a Namaskar and my talk, he was behind the, the desk. I took my instructions, but what do you want? You don't know the words, the, the intensity of learning words of comedy. It was so complex. What do you want? Like, ask me whatever you like. I will give it to you. And I said, Swami, I want to be a I want to be a I was, I don't know, smart enough to ask for the people who speak to me. Who want this love? Would you like anything else than this love? If he's pleased, that's it. The only thing we should care about is for him to be pleased with us. So, if you are angry, you will not be pleased. You will be displeased. Right? You know, there are four laws. Four laws. The first law. Whatever happens is what was supposed to happen in my life. The second law. Whoever appears in your life, the person of God was supposed to appear. The third law. The moment something happens, the person appears in the right way. The fourth law, the most important, when something ends, let it go. Don't get attached to it. That's it. Understand? So, if we understand this law, laws, why are we going to get angry? Okay? No more criticism, no more angry, right? Two spiritual, very important spiritual practices. Another important thing that I want to do, let me say, that is slowly down. <laughs> Before I, I continue with the spiritual exercise, and my next talk will not, will not be here because you will say, <laughs> I will complicate my life. I don't want to hear from him anymore. So, before starting my spiritual practice, I was in the, I was believing in the office, where I was. Right? No. Things everywhere else. I don't know why this story came, but anyway, I'll talk about the five stories and the things. So one day I was in an interview with an interview with Swami, and the interview was over. When Swami stands up and takes the Vibhuti party, the fact that the Vibhuti is in the you kind of actually sit down with Swami and have a question. And also, whenever I have an interview with Swami, I had a lot of questions, and Swami looked at me and says, what do you want, Lord? And I said, all, all by his family, words didn't come to me. And I might have all many things to ask him, but at the moment, no, no, no questions. But at that time, the questions about life in another planet came. So it came to my mind as when he finished the interview. As I told let him sit down again. So I started to start to distribute the interview with him. And I knew instead of being there, I did like this. I need a help. I am happy to say that Harry didn't catch you now, but I haven't catch you. Ask me whatever you want, and now I ask one. So he said to him, Look at me, I'm sorry. So I said to him, Swami, I have a question. He said, yes. And I said, Swami, there is a movie, uh, you know, the order of the village, and we said, in what part can Swami speak as if the word Swami says, there is no life anywhere in the universe as in this planet, right? And I told all this to Swami, there is a movie, and Swami speaking. I was so surprised that I was able to defend all this to Swami, and he was not only listening, but he got the ball on my shoulder, he pressed it, and pressed it down. Yes. He pressed it even more calm. Very, very calm, very calm. And he was like this. And I was speaking, speaking about this, and he was listening to me, I asked. And then I stopped asking, and so he said, well, it's not like that. And he started to explain to me, and why he was looking at me, in such a in such a light, that I lost myself. And I didn't hear anything else. It's like I went to his eyes and asked if I had painted. I didn't hear anything, I didn't know anything. 
And suddenly I came back to reality in a precise and started hearing his voice again. And this was so many times. But I remember about the service, there is light everywhere in the universe. Some forms of light you cannot understand. There is even light on the sun, in the sun. But you cannot understand those forms of light. And he said, there is no one atom in the universe without light. Everything is filled with light. And then in one moment, he was pressing my shoulder so tight. And I thought, how lucky I am that like he's pressing my shoulder. And in that moment, when I thought about it, he stopped me and my eyes. She raised the face of the back of his hand on my head at the back of my hands. Let me know that he knew what I was feeling like he was or well, what I was thinking when he was sitting. We come to that kind of event, sadly I have to become the number one. I want like to tell you the reasons why we are in this conference and the first conference, but I want to tell you this afternoon or tomorrow because now you will not come for sure. But really you must understand that we can do that. Because we have an important role to play in this organization. The self organization has been founded by Swami. Swami made me, and let me tell you this because I had the opportunity to speak with him many times, he made three entities the Central Council, the Self Organization of India, and the International Organization. I was part of the Global Council. At that time, when I was a chair, then Swami one day decided to stop it because he said that the international organization has been so much that it needed independence to grow more. So he founded the international organization first with Blaise Lassen there, then with Dr. Goldstein and he at the time with Dr. Goldstein. I was there in the Vedanta when Swami created the World Foundation, and I know what he said. He said, in the Vedanta organization, we need to be ruled by laws. We need a, a trust that we rule and we'll be careful to follow the law of the countries. And he told Dr. Goldstein, you take charge of this, and he named the members of the of the World Foundation. He never wanted to merge the three of them. In, in, every time we have a world conference, we develop a new guidance. We update the guidance. And we present it to Swami. Our guidance all the time were approved by Swami. The last world conference, 2010, the Dr. Wilson and Dr. Reddy went to see Swami a couple of months before he left his physical world. And they presented it to him. And he went page by page. I don't know if you remember the last year, so he spoke very thoughtfully. It was very difficult to understand. But in that interview, Swami spoke very loud and clear. He went every page, he made some correction, and he blessed them. He blessed the guidance that we have. He blessed our independence. And he said that there will be checks and balances. The central trust was going to be to guide the institutes to combine the family like the hospitals, the educational institutions, the water project. The same organization was to be run the Sahelis in India, and the national organization through the Prasad Council, is the executive body, all the activities of the department and the countries. He was very clear, he was a queen of something. Not only that. So he signed some papers that Sadiari gave to the to he and that he passed away and his wife has then what is what Swami wanted about the international organization, about the central trust being only for Sana V, even Chakrabak is spoke, and we have the video where he said that the central trust doesn't have any jurisdiction outside of India. So the structure. Why are we not joining the global council? First of all, because it is betraying the will of Swami. So we never wanted one organization to run all. This is the will of Swami, which is the highest 
Apply implicitly and immediately the divine command. This is what we must do. You know, another spiritual practice I will tell you is whenever you hear or read or understand a divine message, apply this in your life immediately. Procrastination is a sin. Don't delay. I don't know if you are going to be alive the next month. But not only because of that, you suddenly took the time, the energy, and the decision to let you know about something. If he made you read the book, to let you listen to one of the discourses. If you listen something to one devotee about his message, apply it immediately. If you delay, you are saying no to him. If you say no to him, you will say no to you. It's very simple. So he says, you say yes to me, and say yes to me. Say no to me, and you say no. So say always yes to me. You have to apply this decision to me, obey. This is a guide decision. You can summon up that you can use to apply and obey implicitly and immediately this divine command. This divine command was at the International Organization of Independence. Anyway, and we suddenly heard that uh, we were forming the Global Council. Dr. Ray spoke to Dharma Khan. He said, Please wait till we meet. We discussed it. They said, No, no, we have to wait immediately. Why? Many reasons. One of them was that they wanted to be recognized by the UN and they wanted to be sure that we were in the city of Transports in 130 countries. Some people asked many times to be involved with the governments, with politics. Anyway, we said, okay, let's discuss this. We had a call, we had a meeting with the members of the Central Trust and the Representative Council and the directors of the World Foundation. And we spoke and we said, okay, you are doing this very abruptly, but let's see if we can join them. Let's release the communication saying that we can work together to see if we can join them. We released the document that was discussed by all parties. My habit, where it was established that we were going to each party was going to prepare a draft of the, of the concept paper. We even agreed in, in that discussion that we would, uh, the structure that Swami gave us would be in the name because it was the divine will. The structure of the international center that Swami established. Will be respected because that was respected by Swami. So they agreed to that. When we sent our first draft that was supposed to be read and discussed and tell you I like this point, I want to change that point. Instead of that, the reply was don't speak to us anymore, don't contact us, don't send us an email, don't call by phone, unless we want to surrender that condition to us. That was the response to our draft. And our response was we only surrender to this name to Swami. But we are open, we want to discuss, we are open to discuss, but I said no more discussions. Why? Because they wanted the word that we were going to be subservient to them. And before we agreed that we were going to remain the structure that we made independent, it was not going to be an apple for it would be the global council was going to be a place. For the central class, because the Indian organization of the society council will discuss policy, how to work together. We already had this. Whenever we had the meetings in the Shanti, we invited the members of the central class to our meetings and we discussed uh, what they were doing, what they were doing. Many meetings we had there with them. We had a very amicable and an open relation with them. But suddenly we changed. And they said, no more discussions, no more nothing, unless you surrender to that. Not only that, they split the organization, started to call in everybody to join them. I spoke with Ramaka. No, no, Ramaka told me, we had a couple of conversations, we said something that he didn't want the most, was to get rid of the And he had to think it's possible. I 
the divine commands so of I was to the Lord and the Lord of his son. I would like to like us three more minutes to share things very quickly if I want to. I will only say one more spiritual practice and then got the whole experiences and then I will stop. So then this is not smiling. <laughs> Perhaps the study they call the definition of us by the people. You know, another key aspect many years. So we're feeling with such experiences. Before one more experience, one more spiritual practice, and we'll share during my next talk. The very important spiritual practice is this. Have faith and confidence in Swami. This is something that we must really understand. What means having faith in Swami? Having faith in Swami means have faith that God exists. Must have a deep faith that God exists. What means confidence? Confidence means that God exists and is there, is here for us, that He will help us. He will help us the help is what is best for us. And the third thing is faith, confidence, and courage. Have courage. Have courage to apply these teachings. Have courage to uphold Tao. We need that this courage because if we don't uphold Tao, then all the spiritual practices we do will not be good for us. I will tell you one of the experiences and also one of, of the ways the spiritual is both spiritual exercise and an experience. You know, Swami told us how to pray to God. Would you like to know how? You have to say yes. Yes. Are you sleepy? Are you lost? This is when you speak, I really have a hard time to understand. <laughs> I have to have time to understand me. You understand me? 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 Yes. Yes. Okay. For those that say yes, with energy and with energy. The others, please, stop your ears. Swami said, but the way to pray with God is with intensity. With such intensity that two things must happen. One of the two things. Either we are tired and exhausted and we give up, or God is tired and exhausted and listening to us and He concedes what we want. One of the two has to get has to get tired first. Okay? This is the secret. We cannot pray with God saying, Swami, please give me this. Not the way. So he says, God is like butter and fire. If you have the butter in the fridge, it's going to be cold and soil. You put it near the fire, it will melt. We have to melt God's heart with the intensity of our prayer. One time, I was traveling to seven Latin American countries to attend public meetings and to attend the meetings of the organization to select the new audience All it was planned, all the public meetings, you know, in Latin America we make big public meetings, sometimes thousands of people inside, thousands of people outside. Once I was in Peru, in a big, big theater, I think over 2,000 people were right there, we also crowded from outside when there were people. Before starting, I thought they asked the audience, please, the salary of this, raise their hands. Put them raise their hands and call them, please, get up. Because there were many people outside that needed to go inside. So the public meeting is not outside the business of the public, part of the public. I will speak tomorrow about the public meetings. Anyway, I, I was going to this too. Then after seven countries, I got to go to New York for my business. So I bought a ticket with American Airlines, Buenos Aires, Miami, 
manifesto no es un color. Puedo votar, cambio para el color. Sí, sí. Sí, sí. So, everything was planned. I reached Miami at 5 a.m. in the morning. My flight to Colombia was going to be at 4 p.m. I had 11 hours and decided to wait at the airport. If you know the Miami airport, it's very deep, you can come process. I need 11 hours there and some technical. So I went to immigration, customs, I went to have breakfast. First, I went to the meditation room. I pray again. I did my meditation, then breakfast, then I read something, I slept, I went to one store, another store, read something, you know, 11 hours. Here, there, 11 hours at the Miami airport is the same as two days anywhere else. So, I moved here and decided to go and check in. Went to the company and the bar. Inside the bar, I got a plastic. First, because you know the travel agencies, they gave you the, the tickets, the paper tickets at that time, and it used to be the big plastic. I don't know if it was more than that. Inside that plastic folder, I had my tickets, my passport, my credit cards, and two thousand dollars that I needed for, especially for my business trip to New York. I put it there. I put the hand the back to get this last folder, it was not there. Again, again, not there. If you lose your tickets, they might issue a new one. But if you lose one, your passport, you have to go back to your room. The consulate will issue a temporary passport only to go back to your room. You cannot continue to change. I lost everything. Ticket, passport, money, credit cards, everything. I became crazy. In two hours, my flight was departing. That day at 7 p.m. Colombian time, I was going to be, I was in public meeting, I was one, was one of the big speakers. My photograph of my name was in the posters, it was distributed everywhere. They say in the other countries, we got the uh, this meeting for the selection of officers, the office of different countries have already bought their tickets to go to the place where the selection was going to be. And we continue. What's the inside? I became crazy. I started to go to the different places that I remember that I go running to one place or the other. I was a crazy man running to one place or the other. Then I went I, I remember I was in lost and found office. I went there, nothing was there. It was so crazy. And you know, from the Miami airport, the baby parts, I don't know how many, every couple of minutes, I thought, if someone found this and found $2,000, you might be in a train thanking God for this gift. And then I remember Swami. And I said, I remember that I had to pray to him to test him. So I, I thought I had to sit on the chair and said, I had to be in a private place. So the most private place in the Miami was the bathroom. I went to the bathroom, closed the door, sat on the toilet, and I sat at the show. Show me, please, show me, please, show me, please. Not allowed. Because I'm going to say that it's a crazy man that would be the energy of the silver. But then I was, show me, please, show me, please, show me, please. For 40 minutes or 45 minutes, I was in that bathroom. Show me, please, show me, please. And I was completely exhausted. I know what he said. He came to the guy and said, one more so I put it and say two. I had no more energy. And he came up and I said that it will be done. I thought I will ask someone to the phone to go to the concentrate and to help him. I left the bathroom, the first bathroom I found in the big Miami airport. When I closed the exit door, I raised my close my head. The baby was standing there, the son is looking straight to me. He was looking straight to me and raised her hand with my last person for the report. And he said, and she said, Is this yours? And I was like, yes, yes, yes. 
So I went to there and took the folder and opened to see if everything was inside. He took the real post and took it again. He took me two seconds to do this and this. And I was going to get the lady back. Even if she was Isaiah's I, I, I boy, I don't know his name is before, put a gun, two seconds, vanish the female. This is wrong. We are very important. How is it not the girl? Because I'm telling the whole story. I took the plane, everything was arranged. No, I was taking the plane at 4 p.m. to reach Colombia, go from the airport to the public. First, the, my room was, was a hotel where the party was going to be held, and uh, to the public meeting. I went to the plane, delayed. The time was so immediately, the plane delayed, 40 minutes late. So I said, no chance to arrive at the party meeting. Finally, the plane the plane party, I reached the Colombia airport, and then I had to press the button, free to go. Ready to have to go to customs. I said, Well, I have to go to the public meeting. I touched the bottom, right? I said, Well, if I couldn't be at the public meeting before, not this. The queue to the screen, you know, they open your luggage. Finally, I went through, a good soul was waiting for me, and they took me directly to the public meeting. Of course, the public meeting had started, they took me to the stage. And when I sat on the stage, I sat, and the moment I started back, the doctor said, the next speaker, the doctor said, he was not there, they waiting for me. It was the sad time when I was supposed to speak. So I sat, and I stood up, it was my turn. And when I started to speak, it came to my mind, and the previous person said, before I hear this, is the because I follow up, what do you want to say before? The song is really the two words. This is something that we must know. We cannot the words. There is this. We are all excited of this. We have such an incredible, an incredible life. You know, one day, one day in the Brazil, the, I was going to tell you another story, but I'm going to forget to repeat this one. The sacrificial was growing and growing and growing. And in Brazil, the spiritualist, the spiritualist movement is a mixture of Catholic church and spirituality. They have millions of followers. They were concerned that the sacraments did not do so much. They have like five or seven Sunday schools, centers all over Brazil. They were concerned. What they said to India, the number two of that organization, the first professor Divaldo, if you go to Wikipedia, you will know him. He has series, he is very young. He has spiritual series, he's a very evolved spiritual aspect. So he went to Brazil to prove that Swami was the faith. So he went to the Asian, and when he came back to Brazil, he gave his first palestra, at least his first lecture. Five thousand people, and he said that he went to, to the Ashram of Sai Baba, and he saw that the Ashram was surrounded by angels. That all the negativity that the people that left become outside were the going to the Ashram. That when Swami comes and all right, when Swami has paid the person to become the whom Swami is, and all the negative disappears and he is filled with a big uh, light. He spoke so well about Swami, and he spoke about the things that we don't see in our lives. It's only so physical way. That's why we are so, so lucky. Because we are instruments in the divine mission of the in our life that can change the constitution of the whole community. We can be four kinds of players. We can be office players that do this, office players that complain. Of his friends that go to nothing, of his friends that inspire. There are people that are members of the organization that do a lot of things. Others are there, they have no idea what is happening. Others are there that they put a lot of energy. Somebody gave us a formula one account, 
They said, this car will take you to the border. Then there are four kinds of drivers. Some drivers are afraid that this car is too fast, I can, I may crash the government's law. Others are a little more silly. They go and they put in the people in the brain. They are supposed to be around more silly people. They do bad. Those people that after reaching the summer is going to have already in certain form. But they said, I have to pay this one because that's the best that is available at full speed. And they will reach the goal. So we have to decide what kind of devotees we are. When the ceremony is simply just to listen to bhajans, we are happy when we listen and see bhajans. We do service every week or every month. But we are going to praise us in the area. The praise us in the area, as I said before, is to use both legs. Intensify our spiritual sadhana, get us into class 40. Be the examples of Swami's message. Be the greeting with smiles and happiness. Telling them the, the message of Swami. Telling them what is the real purpose of life. Life, how can we achieve it? So let's be more proactive, not active, proactive. So the day we have to leave this morning, Swami will see that. Yes, my and said, well done. I hope that all of you, the day that you come, we will see the very big smile from Swami, makes Swami very happy. I hope that during that time you will make your fellow beings happy also. Let me come to one of us, let me introduce you to my mission. Say something.